8A game is in the books. What did it look like? We're going to give you our five takeaways from Tuscaloosa's 8A game from yesterday. Lots here, Brooks. Hey, four-star wide receiver. This guy has flown under the radar, but he joins Alabama, who right now has another top recruiting class and getting better. And just when you were worried about Rylan Griffin heading out, he wants to go test the free agency market of the Wild West of college basketball. The Final Four wasn't good enough. I'm leaving. Hey, guess what? Alabama might have just got a better shooter, someone that fits the system a little bit better. As Chris Youngblood, Tuscaloosa native, says, hey, I'll take that spot. We're going to talk about all that right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Roll tight, everybody. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Get in the comments section. Tell us what you think. And let's get this party started. Here's your invitation. What do you say, everybody? There he is. There he is. Big, sexy Elmo in the house from WJLX. Brett Elmore. I'm Mick Gillespie at Broadcaster Mick. Uh, Roll Tide, man. Got I got my WJLX shirt on, and you oh, got a man. nice polo on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Happy uh, A-Day, uh, post-A-Day day, I guess you would call it, this Sunday. And uh Time to talk about some takeaways from the game. Hey, man, look at me. <laughs> yeah, you're staring at me. Right yeah. there. Right there. Yeah, right right there. there. That's exactly how I wanted it growing up. Yeah, I see that. All right. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll bring you back later. Um, <laughs> all right, let's talk, let's talk some A-Day football, okay? Now that the dust has settled, uh, White beat Crimson 34-28. So the offense beat the defense the way that this thing was drawn up. 30, uh, excuse me, 72,358, the announced attendance for the game. You guys showed up. You, you, you guys not only watched on national television on ESPN, but you also showed up and, and made this a big event. And I think that this was a good thing because it sends a message to all the recruits. I'm going to talk about that. Bama still fired up even past Nick Saban. But, Brett, let's talk five takeaways from the game itself. Five takeaways from uh, the game itself. I guess you would have to start at the quarterback play. Yeah, and here's the stats, right? Ty Simpson I thought was pretty good, 7-12, to 12, uh, 200, uh, 102 yards. Jalen Milrow, 3-9, and nine, but hit some deep balls. He his long was uh, 52. Dylan Lonergan continues to prove that he can spin the football as well. Eight of 12. And Austin Mack, you know, on the post game show, I'm like, ah, I didn't really think he did much, but he still was six of nine uh, yeah. and completed some passes. So all of those guys combined to have a really good day. And your takeaway from that, who's at the number one line? Well, I mean, because well, because of yeah, because of the stats, right? But right. You know, because of the yardage, but I just want to play the devil's advocate there. Is there, I just want to create a little, stir the pot a little bit. Is this going to be a race or not? It's Milrow's job to lose, but Ty Simpson is nipping at his heels. Well, I, I think competition is good for any position. That doesn't yeah. mean quarterback. That doesn't mean offensive line. That doesn't mean, you know, defensive back, linebacker, every position. I think Milrow's the guy to beat. But you know what? If if these guys go in and they really force this to become a competition, that's only going to make everyone better. Absolutely. All right. So you got quarterback was your first takeaway. Second takeaway. Defense struggled. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like that too, man. Uh, the defense, uh, particularly in the first half, they they weren't they weren't able to uh, to stop anything to the edge. They weren't tackling. There were a lot of gaps, missed tackles. Intensity wasn't good, and I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm concerned. I, I you know we we talk about and we talked about it on the live show yesterday after the game. Uh, is this vanilla? Are we not just showing things? I mean, there's a lot of things that, that you can take away from it, but overall. 
I was disappointed in the defense, even though thinking back on it and having some time to really maul things over overnight, uh, you know, the defense had a couple of interceptions called back, uh, which would have either tied or given them the win if those would have stood. Hmm. One by uh, Kirkpatrick in the end zone that was nullified for uh, for an offside penalty, and then one by um, oh gee, now one was uh, Drake Kirkpatrick had one. Uh, yeah, and and Brown almost had one on the sidelines, and he uh he couldn't hold on to the ball, but. Anyway, uh, I don't know what to think of it, but but it needs work. I know that. Yeah, no doubt. All right, that's the second one. Third one. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it out there, and I think you'll agree. Jam Miller looked excellent at, at the running back spot, and yeah. Alabama got contributions not just from him, but from all the running backs. Um, he was the game's MVP, Jam Miller. Eight attempts, 83 yards, two touchdowns, including a 48-yard run. Uh, Kendrick Law on, you know, a receiver running the ball on a sweep uh, or a jet, yeah, I think it was a jet sweep, uh, one attempt, 34 yards. He turned the corner. I liked what I saw with Richard Young, seven attempts, 29 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Justice Haynes, I don't know why he only had three uh, attempts for 10 yards. Might have gotten banged up and he scored a touchdown and then Milro ran the ball. But uh, Miller and Richard Young uh, both – Really good, and again, Miller, the MVP of the game. Uh, yeah, uh, and then fourth, I would have to go uh, still on the offensive side of the ball. I, I like the receiving core. I thought, uh, let me tell you something, uh, Bernard's going to be, well, he's a player. Uh, three receptions, 122 yards. Uh, his longest was a 52-yard catch. You had Cole Adams in there. Uh, three catches, 46 yards, as long as 20. Uh, Emmanuel Henderson Jr. Uh, got in the action. Kobe Prentice, Caleb Odom, all with catches. Uh, I really like that spot, too. Yeah, Bernard and, and Odom, was... Is Odom, um, forgive me if I'm wrong, is he the uh, the tight end? Well, he was a tight end, and they moved him to receiver, from what I understand. Okay, he's a big right. guy, like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, six, out yeah, there to yeah. catch the ball. You know, is going to be able to out out leap guys uh, and make plays that direction. But Bernard, with three catches and 122 yards, explosive plays, had the 52 yard catch. Some people thought, hey, you know, if it's not Jam Miller, he could have been the game's MVP. Uh, great showing, first time we've seen him in an Alabama uniform. Even with just three receptions, he stood out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Did. Yeah, he did. All right, uh, final he, final one. Uh, final one. Uh kicking game who's going to replace the man yeah you know yeah uh I, I would say kicking game i don't know what's your what's your what's your take well look i'm i'm concerned about the kicking game uh you know and i'll put it up there for you i got the kicking stats here as well um you know but i mean i know it's look it's a practice game right and and uh uh Talty, he missed that for, uh, officially a 45 yarder. Some people said it's 47 yarder, uh, but you got three guys vying for that position. So uh, they'll get that. They'll get that short up b b before opening day. I, um, but um, they, uh, other than that, uh, the only other takeaway I have is what happened to the grass at Bryant Denny Stadium? <laughs> I noticed that too. It was like, it was Brown on the sides. Uh, and, uh, this set, uh, was addressed by, uh, uh, our athletic director after the game, because everyone was saying, what has happened to the grass? Well, it's, it's probably dormant this time of year, you know, like it, it the grass doesn't always, it depends on what different type sod they use, but it, it could just be a little dormant and it'll green up. I, I, I don't on, know. On the sides it looked like a freaking mohawk the it middle did. was all right <laughs> it looked like a mohawk and good grief people were playing on we're the only game on national television can't you get the grass right well what they should have done is they should have painted that grass to match the rest i of think they the tried to and it's and like they, dirt and they just it's like they, they played the game at addison high school <laughs> 
Did they go back to Junction for this game? What's going on? <laughs> oh, the grounds crew is going to hate you for that. Oh, Vince they're going to hate me, but I love you, grounds crew. I know. The last time they played on that field, anybody touched that field, was the Super 7 High School Championship. So Yeah, blame it on the high school kids. Yeah, blame it on them. The, the, the reason I think it had something to do with Saad was just the way that it was like you could tell – that it was a different grass down the middle in the hashes than it was on the side because the, the grass on the side was dormant and it, it hadn't greened up yet. So I, I'm guessing that what that's the hair on both sides of my head was dormant. And this was just, <laughs> you would say there's something wrong with bro. <laughs> <laughs> You'd look like Polly Walnuts off of uh, <laughs> Sopranos. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk, uh, some, some recruiting news, right? Uh, this was, this was a big one, man. Lots here. Brooks, four star, three star, most publications. ESPN has him as a four. He's going to go up to a four star oh, yeah. under the radar guy. He didn't do a lot of the camps that, that these guys do, but he set all kind of records in New Jersey where he's from. And he got offers from Georgia and a bunch of other schools and just fell in love with uh, Coach Shepard at Alabama, the wide receiver coach, and the Crimson Tide. Family's excited about it. He picks Alabama, and he does it right after the 8A game. I loved it. At least they announced it then. Yeah, uh, I loved it too, and he did He did that on purpose. Uh, he said he decided uh, after meeting with coach Shepard uh, last week mm -hmm. uh he knew it was the right place that's what he said uh and he didn't want to be anywhere else so uh this guy yeah he's he's under the radar to some but you better look out for this guy record setting wide receiver 3,355 uh yards receiving and 51 touchdowns in his high school career both of those uh <laughs> speaking of Polly Walnuts uh, South Jersey Reckon. <laughs> he also has a max speed of 22 miles an hour. This guy can play. And uh, that was great to see right after a day. One of the most disappointing things that happened this week was Rylan Griffin announcing that he was transferring, you know, and I, and I don't know, look, I'm not behind the scenes. I, I don't know what the, you know, what's going on. Is this a, a situation like some of you guys have suggested that, you know, he's going after a payday like Isaiah Bond. Uh, is this one where, you know, he just didn't feel like he was utilized the way that he wanted to? Um, the team made it to the Final Four. He was a, a guy that played a lot, started a lot, did did a bunch of good stuff on the basketball court, and he's leaving. And I was disappointed in that. I wanted to see that team come back as intact as they could possibly be and win a national championship, or at least come into the season as the number one team in the country and go after it. So he leaves, or at least he's, it seems like he's leaving. He's saying he's leaving and good luck. And, and I hope that you, you get all the NIL money you can get. And then Nate Oates again, goes out and finds someone that wants to be in Tuscaloosa <laughs> Chris Youngblood commits to Alabama. There were a lot of schools after Youngblood from South Florida. He's a he's a senior. He's one of these guys that's got, got the extra year because of COVID. 15 points per game, 42% from three. Seems like this is going to be a great fit for the Bama basketball team. Yeah, coach doing his normal thing. He's just uh, so good at it, bringing in these guys and um, – uh, yeah, and then this kid's coming home. Uh, he's from Tuscaloosa, um, shooting um, uh, 40, 40, about basically 40 percent, uh, 46 percent from the floor, averaged about 15 points a game, 42 percent from behind the arc. I mean, uh, this guy was a um, the co AAC player of the year this past year, and 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 you talked yesterday about. We were talking about the Alabama football schedule, but the same thing with basketball. You have these mid majors, and and he was kind of the 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 prime guy in those mid majors. Uh, but this guy can absolutely light it up from behind the arc, and um, this is this is a good one. Um, he played three seasons at Kennesaw State, um, and uh, he scored over a thousand points uh, while he was there. So this guy, he's a player.
Yeah. So what's the Tuscaloosa connection? I know he's got Sharpsburg, uh, Georgia, you know, as a place um, and a six foot four, 200 pounder, but someone that, you know, Alabama is excited to get. He's originally from Tuscaloosa. Then he played his high school ball in Georgia. Okay. Um, don't know the situation there, but he's from Tuscaloosa. East uh, Kotawa or Kota? East Co. Kotawa uh, or Kota, I, a place I've never been. It's K, never. Uh, excuse me, C O W E T A in mm. Sharpsburg. Mm. Not sure, but I, I know this guy was highly sought after in the portal. I think uh, him and a teammate uh, may have went to Louisville and visited too. Uh, but that uh, was another thing that hit uh, right after the, the basketball team was recognized at the A Day game with a trophy. And then a little little while later, you get this news. So, man, I'm telling you, it's a great time to be an Alabama fan. A lot of recruits were in town. We'll have updates on all of those coming up soon. You know, who who had a great visit, uh, what people are saying. And then don't forget tomorrow, the transfer portal opens. And we are going to have news for you hot and heavy going both directions. So, you yeah. know, who knows what's going to happen. But all I can tell you is that Alabama is going to be a better football team when that transfer portal ends up closing because I, I think that you go out, you you hit – like Nick Saban said, you you, you got – that we'll take advantage of the transfer portal. And you know, he didn't really get in the positions, but I think you got you got to go after that transfer portal and sure up that defense. No doubt about it. If you can get someone that can help tackle, that can help pressure the quarterback, obviously you need some help in the secondary. There's spots – and oh, they're yeah. going to have to fill them with guys that can come in ready to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he will. He will. Uh, he'll, he'll be just like Coach Oates. I mean, uh, and, and like we mentioned before, this is a two-way street. Alabama, I think they have uh, three guys transferring out, but they've they've got two guys transferring in. You know, this is the second transfer he's added. So, you know, it's a two-way street, but we're going to get our guys. We'll get our share. All right, and here's someone trying to get their share. There he is right there. Uh, WJLX's Brett Elmore from the Brett Elmore Show, uh, WJLX Sports. You guys might know him, or maybe from right here, but uh, Big Sexy Elmo on every morning from 6 to 8 a.m. And maybe you can hear the Walker County behind me as someone's revving up their engine. Um <laughs> Yes, uh, and, and and I'm just uh, you look there. I, I'm admiring Mick in that picture. Look at over there, just admiring Mick there. Uh, weekday morning, six till ten. WJLX 1015.com available on all major apps. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the morning. Hey guys, don't forget about our good buddy Catfish. Haven't seen him in a while. He's been really busy with his other stuff, and his other stuff is. Chadwickanderson.com. Uh, if you're in the uh, the need for a mortgage guy, he's the best. He got me into my home. Uh, I got an amazing um, interest rate, and he uh, wouldn't happen without him. And I'm telling you that not just because he's uh, part of our crew here, but uh, I've, seriously. But give him a call yourself. Uh, he's helped over 10,000 families get into homes, investment consultant, and Airbnb expert. And finally, I want to remind all of you guys that we're brought to you by newlifeart.com, promo code Bama Tailgate, 15% off. And you guys have been using it, and I really appreciate it, 4th and 31. And we, we're going to change that code soon. So make sure that you take advantage of it if you want that print because it looks fabulous. But there's some other really cool stuff coming out as well with New Life Art, and uh, we'll be on it here as well. Thanks for hanging out. Big day for Alabama yesterday. Tomorrow, the transfer portal opens. So we got a lot going on, and we will cover it right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Roll Tide.